In this video, I will discuss the four main types of cloud computing models in a simplified manner. If you find this video helpful, then consider leaving a like, comment, and subscribing. With that being said, let's get right into the video. Software as a service is on-demand software or application that is provided by a third party over the internet. This model prevents the unnecessary workload that comes with coding, installing, managing, and maintaining an application. Cloud providers are required to maintain the application, as well as the data that comes with it. Software as a service also provides scalability. You can simply adjust resources up and down as necessary. This model essentially does all the hard work for you when it comes to software. A popular example of software as a service is Google Workspace. This cloud-based solution provides applications like Gmail, Google Docs, and Google Drive. These applications are all pre-configured and are ready to use. The next cloud service model is Infrastructure as a Service. This service provides virtualized hardware, virtual machines, storage, and networking resources. Consumers are still responsible for deploying and maintaining the application and data. Infrastructure as a service eliminates the need of buying physical hardware in a data center as it provides on-demand scalability. Companies can scale their resources up or down depending on the workload. This gives full control over their infrastructure. This service uses a pay-to-go model, meaning the company or user only pays for the resources they use. Examples of cloud providers that provide this service include Amazon Web Services, Microsoft Azure, Rackspace, and plenty others. The third cloud service model is Platform as a Service. This service provides a platform that allows consumers to build, run, and manage their own application. It can help developers focus more on writing the code rather than managing the servers and infrastructure. Along with the platform, this service also provides developer tools, servers, operating systems, and middleware like databases. All of those are extremely useful and necessary during the development lifecycle of applications. Platform as a service is typically subscription-based or per-use base. This eliminates capital expenses associated with traditional hardware and software in physical data centers. Google App Engine is a prime example of this service as it allows developers to create web applications on Google's platform. The last cloud service model is Desktop as a Service, which offers exactly what it sounds like. This service provides a virtual desktop over the internet that users can connect to. Users can access the desktop environment with a click of a button and does not require lots of physical resources to do so. Popular providers include VMware Horizon, Citrix, Amazon Workspaces, and more. Now that you know the cloud service models, let's analyze this chart comparing on-premises to infrastructure as a service platform as a service, and software as a service. Let's start with the on-premises column. If you manage all services and infrastructure in your own data center, then it would be considered an on-premises model. You would have to manage everything from the application, data, and runtime to the servers, storage, and networking. This would be very expensive and time-consuming to manage. According to multiple articles, around 90% of companies use some sort of cloud services. This is because they live through the times when cloud wasn't as big. They know the hassle of running everything on premises. Infrastructure as a service allows the cloud provider to manage the virtualization, servers, storage, and networking. This takes some workload off the organization, but they would still have to manage the application, data, runtime, middleware, and operating system. In Platform as a Service, the client only manages the application and data, while everything else is managed by the cloud provider. Lastly, you could outsource everything starting from the application all the way down to the networking. 
This allows organizations to focus more on other business priorities. If you found this video helpful, let me know in the comment section down below. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe for more easy-to-understand explanations on information technology and networking concepts.